everyone, and we'll be saving the planet with Dan Levine, okay. who is a private investor and the founder and managing partner of 104 Holdings, a leading investment firm based in New York. Take thanks, your thanks seat, Thanks, Renata. Dan. That's a tall order. I'm going to try and live <laughs> up to that. Mine is taller. <laughs> Um, thank you for joining us today, and I would like to start with a question concerning the title of our conversation, because uh, it says, let's save the planet. And I would like to ask you uh, how you understand this title, and whether it's not just a handy cliché, but something that can be, you know, achieved. Sure. No, thanks for that. And first, I want to say thank you for welcoming me to Poland. Every time I come here, I, I learn a tremendous amount from the ecosystem, so it's an honor. And it's, as an American, it's very inspiring to see uh, what's going on. Um, I think you're right about the title. I think that um, I'm a private investor, so I try to harness the private uh, finance and technology markets. For me, it's about what can I do today? What can I do now? And as a consumer in the U.S., there's different brands where as an individual, I can buy a pair of shoes, they donate a pair of shoes to someone in need. I like the word force multiplier because what I can do with my professional life is apply, apply larger amounts of capital to create uh, a greater than one impact. And so it's for me about what can we do now? There's a sense of urgency I think we have to have about climate, about other themes we'll talk about today. That's what it means to me. Mm -hmm. You started 10 for Holdings 14 years ago. Mm. And uh, as you told me before we came on the stage, its values and mission was quite different then. What was the journey from 10 for Holdings 14 years ago until now? Thank you. Yeah, no, thanks for that question. I think that as in your own personal life, perhaps, you go through evolutions and journeys. As you said, we didn't start as a climate investor. We didn't start as an impact investor. To take a step back, and I know there's different folks in the room from different backgrounds. Public equity is, of course, when you buy a stock in the public stock markets. Private equity is buying into any privately held uh, company. Venture capital is a type of private equity, which is usually higher risk, higher reward. And then you've heard of impact investors. And so um, we set out to be for-profit investors, full stop. And we've ended up with a portfolio that touches climate. I think that one of the reasons we came to that is that we found that the businesses that are paying attention to climate, other parts of their bottom line, have a better handle on their costs have a better handle on their revenue, have a better handle on retaining customers and getting customers to come back again and again. So it's been a journey for us. We're now very focused on industrial transformation between Europe, the United States, other parts of the world, and that's where we are today. Okay. Um, and um, what are, according to you, the most pressing environmental challenges facing the world today? Sure. Um, you know, in, for me personally, and I think in no particular order, um, I'm focused on urbanization and increasing uh, migration to cities, uh, the taxing on natural resources, um, climate change, and um, those, those kinds of themes. And so what's happening is, um, let's take extreme weather events, for example. Um, in the past 20 years, according to the World Meteorological Association, there's been a 30% increase in droughts. There's been a 130% increase in floods. And so... Now you have a bunch of people running into the cities. That taxes the municipal services and utilities, creates instability. We've seen that stability matters. It's important to what we believe in. Uh, and so I think we're going to have to find these technology solutions, and we'll come back to that, that can address those challenges that we're facing every day. Can you share some examples of recent investments uh, Tenfor Holdings has made in support of environmental sustainability? Sure. Um, every, everyone who's an investor dreams of being Warren Buffett. Um, I am no different. Uh, and, um, you know, what we've recently launched is a permanent capital vehicle in the style of Berkshire Hathaway. Um, it has a very big focus on nature and sustainability um, that I hope will pay dividends for generations to come. When we make an investment, we try to focus first on something that's going to help industries decarbonize. Um, the latest IPCC report, which is, which is tied in, it's an intergovernmental uh, and country report on some of these metrics, says that in order to hit the one and a half degrees Celsius Paris Agreement from 2015, which was aspirational, 
that peak uh, carbon must be in 2025, and then it must come down by half by 2030. Well, that's pretty, pretty darn soon. So, um, but that said, that same report is optimistic, cautiously optimistic, that something can be done. So what we do is we look for something that has instantaneous ROI. ROI means return on investment. Um, an example would be a company of ours called Aperia. Aperia is a business that automatically inflates and deflates truck tires. The reason that's interesting is that trucking industry is a heavy emitter. We can put a device on your tire today. It can begin having better fuel efficiency today. It can reduce carbon footprint today. It works in America. It works in Europe. It works in other parts of the world. That's one example. A very different example would be a company called Ketos, which is focused on water quality, and it also has a uh, carbon, carbon uh, reduction uh, component to it. Um, I think one of the things that, for those who focus on the carbon marketplaces, one of the things that's important is proof. How many trees have I planted? How do I know? You know, I can't go to every farm around the world. So we focus on themes that help with verification. Um, and that's a big theme in climate investing. It's called monitoring, reporting, and verification. Um, one of our businesses called AgriPoint is working with tree crop businesses around the world, Nestle, Coco, et cetera, these kinds of businesses, uh, where, where we can sort of prove with tech-enabled businesses that this is what you've planted. And how do you assess the environmental impact of uh, potential investments? And what criteria do you apply while selecting the companies you invest in? We first and foremost look for profit and also social impact. And one of the things about our investor base, we work with a lot of prominent US families, uh, now European families as well as institutions. We're fortunate that a lot of the people we engage with are what's called next-gen leaders. These are the next generation of typically family businesses. They care about our investment themes, but if we didn't make them any money, then they wouldn't be so patient. We're fortunate that they have a long-term point of view, and so by looking for that and then happening to invest in businesses that have an impact, I think that's where we've been um, able, to, able to find those successes. Mm -hmm. um, you listed the most pressing environmental mm. challenges that we face today, and I would like to ask you, how can private investment play a role in addressing them, not only 10 for holdings, the private investors in general? Absolutely, I, I love that, love that question. I think um, something that's on my mind is a new category of assets called nature-based assets. What is that? Uh, what uh, is that? Yes, okay, so you guys go to your nice hotel, there's a nice coral reef, you can scuba dive, it's a nice resort, presumably that's why you go to the hotel. No one has ever sought until recent times to quantify the value of that coral reef. And I'm a systems thinker, Earth is our number one system, um, and what's happening now with those same verification tools that we were talking about a moment ago, I can now say, how many fish live there? How many types of fish? How many more people would come as the coral reef is degraded um, versus, the, versus in the past and those kinds of things? And so if the financial markets can start to support these kinds of assets, and I think you'll start to see this emerge in the public markets, in the private markets, this is coral reefs, this is forests, this is something called peatland, um, there are different things around the world. It's a place we're focusing. It's another place that I think individual investors and institutional investors can and are going to start to get behind. Turns out you protect that local ecosystem. That's good for the hotel. That's good for the tourists. You protect, um, I was talking to a guy yesterday, we do a lot in ocean health. He has quantified the value of a blue whale. Now, there was industrial hunting of blue whales, mostly in the 19th century. Today, a shipping company doesn't have an incentive to, to not run over that whale, and that goes on. Um, the, the Maori people have just now given personhood rights to whales, and uh, this guy has quoted it, the whale as being about a $3 million value. We can talk about how he gets there. If I can write that into an insurance policy, all of a sudden the ship captain has a very different incentive. So those kinds of pushes as consumers, who you vote for with your dollars, where you spend your money, it's the consumer push that's been ahead of government and initially the private sector. Thank you. And um, you've already told me about this, but I would like to make, uh, make it very, very precise. How do you balance the financial objectives of your investments with the goal of making a positive impact on the planet? I, I think the reason I started at the beginning with private equity, venture capital, 
impact investing is that there's been a history of we do impact first, and that gets looked down upon by certain traditional investors. They say, well, you're compromising on returns. And in our case, we are different from a traditional impact investor. We go for profit first. It is our view that if you also account for the social and climate impacts of your business, you're going to be a better business in ways that I can explain to traditional business people. Again, do my customers come back more often? Are my customers happier with me? Do they spend more money with me? All things that we can understand if you're a business person. Um, I, you know, what's exciting for me is, is, is basically saying, can we outcompete another business if it's also doing good? And I think that's very important. I think that we're going to see traditional impact investors migrate more toward this model. And to your point, that's a very good thing. The whole ecosystem can evolve that way. That would be great. Mm -hmm. You're a co-founder of Tenfor Holdings, right? And you have some um, business uh, associates. Do you sometimes have um, heated discussions mm -hmm. on whether we should you know, invest in this uh, business or the other? And uh, would there be any quarrels about you know, the profits and the uh, sustainability? Um, so I think we, com we, come from, we try to be truth tellers. Um, no one has a monopoly on the truth, we like to say. Um, dissent is not, dis is not disloyalty. Um, and I think that what we try to anchor back to, the, the heat is driven by passion. Uh, I think that's the word for us. We're all passionate about trying to move the needle, trying to make an impact. What we come back to is data. Ten years ago, there was a lot less data than there is today. Now, there can be too much data. You don't know where to start. So we also invest in companies that help organize that data. Think about what Google does in front of the internet. It makes it simpler, right? So we can find tools to unlock those kinds of data. We can then get down to what's our bet, what's our hypothesis, what are the unknowns, and we can reduce that and then make a decision. Thank you. And um, when you look ahead, what do you see as the future of impact investing in the context of environmental conservation and sustainability? Yeah, I, look, I, I think we're going to see more and more of it. Um, there is a reason that all of the big name brands have all raised climate funds. In fact, those climate funds have grown in size, and it's not just because their investors are saying, do this. They're seeing also that you can outcompete uh, by this. So I think we're going to see transformation uh, in these sectors because people are now paying attention to things now that they have the tools, now that they have the data, now that they have the technology. Um, the public sector plays a very important role in innovation. Uh, so do universities. Um, but it's not enough. And so what I'm very focused on is how can the transformative hands of the public and the private sectors work together um, to, to get moving. There is no time like the present. There hasn't been any time like the present. Um, for me, it's a very exciting time to be a private investor. Um, I think we are going to have to challenge ourselves to be more creative um, uh, and more energetic uh, around this, but I think we can, I think we can do that. And uh, probably the last question, because we are running mm. out of time. Um, where do you see Ten for Holdings in 14 years from sure. now, which is like you know another life of your firm? Thank you. No, thanks for that. Look, I am. I am. As you get older, professionally and personally, you start to think about the next generation. Um, some of my earliest experiences in nature, you learn teamwork, you learn individuality, you learn resilience, um, you learn to be calm under pressure, you learn to do things um, with scarce resources, protecting those um, environments for the next generation not just in our shop, but for the world, um, is something that I hope we've contributed to. Um, I hope that this permanent capital vehicle we have set up will have companies that are flourishing, and I hope that some of the nature-based assets that maybe we're talking about for the first time with some of us um, will only grow and will have protected resources around the world. Mm -hmm. And do you think there is um, the public support for this kind of uh, investments and this kind of thinking and this kind of making business? I think there will be. Um, if you said to me, measure today. So there is no yet. There's right? not, there is among mm -hmm. early, what are called early adopters. What I'm, what I'm suggesting is that as technology grows, as data grows, and as pricing, how much is that whale worth? Mm -hmm. How much is that coral reef? As, as those tools get out there, people can act in their collective self-interest and make the financial decisions to protect those resources. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dan Levine, thank, thank you, you so much for being with us. Yeah.